In case you fear Gooch patients, I'll provide you a comprehensive overview. My name is Gudel. I'm a paediatric anaesthetist and intensivist. And my special interest is all those congenital heart patients, paediatric or adults. What is the case with these patients? Uh, Maxwell and his colleagues in Baltimore, they have done a huge amount of studies in which they did a case control between 10,000 Gooch patients and 40,000 healthy patients doing non-cardiac surgery. And interestingly, they found a substantial increased morbidity and mortality related to the Gooch patients. They died, they had strokes, they had cardiac events. They went further. They looked into 21 closed claim cases in which the patients, the Gooch patients had undergone cardiac or non-cardiac surgery. In the cardiac cases, they found that the surgical technique was responsible for the incidence. Disappointingly, in the non-cardiac cases, it was the preoperative assessment, it was the anesthetic services perioperatively, and it was the postoperative care. So obviously, attention needs to be drawn to non-cardiac surgery in this patient group. From the pediatric population, we know uh, through the POCA studies and other studies that it is the competence of the anesthetic team that influences the outcome. Because if the same patient comes to cardiac surgery, the whole team in the OR knows everything about the child, the pathophysiology, and how to provide safe anesthesia. In case the same patient shows up in the orthopedic OR, that may be not the case. So please take interest, engage, and enjoy. This is a lovely study. I absolutely love it <clears throat> because it gives a comprehensive overview of the morbidity associated with living with congenital heart disease. 7,000 patients were followed at the Royal Brompton. It shows a five-year risk of death for any patient 40 years of age. On the y-axis, you have the equivalent age in the general population, ranging from 40 up to 80. And it shows very nicely how a Fontan patient, at the age of 40, they have a five-year risk of death as if they were 75. And there is a, a good association between the complexity of the congenital defect and the risk of morbidity. So what's the case with living with a congenital heart? I'll show an example. This is a TGA with a Senning mustard procedure. Since the 80s, we no longer do Senning mustard but patients that were born before the 80s, they most often have a, had a Senning mustard procedure. Okay, I'll walk you through this anatomy. All the venous blood comes into a baffle. It's rooted through a baffle, going into the left atrium, left ventricle, and up to the pulmonary artery. What does that mean? It means these baffles, they can become stenotic, they can leak, leading to a, a chronic state of venous congestion. That venous congestion affects the liver. They develop liver cirrhosis, they develop ascites. The chronic state of venous congestion affects the kidneys. They get renal impairment. Okay. That's the venous side of it. Then you have the systemic side, okay? The red blood enters the right atrium, goes down to the right ventricle, acting as the systemic ventricle out in the aorta. This right ventricle was not built to do the work of a systemic ventricle. So over time, it literally gets exhausted. So over time, they develop a systemic ventricle failure, leading to pulmonary congestion and leading to eventually a state of low cardiac output. And then you have that vicious circle 
of a low systemic cardiac output and a chronic venous congestion leading to even more renal impairment, eventually renal failure, even more uh, affection of the liver and liver failure. This was a random example. Up here on the left, I've noted the, the blood, the coagulation system, and all the red blood cells. In any patient suffering chronic hypoxic state, they develop polycythemia. Some of them reach hemoglobin levels of 25. And in any patient having a hemoglobin of 25, the spleen gets stressed eating the erythrocytes and also eating the thrombocytes. So it's very common that the patients with chronic cyanosis and polycythemia also have coinciding thrombocytopenia. They bleed. So I've now pointed out some of the pathophysiological reasons for why these patients are particularly in risk. And they are increasing. Improvements in both surgical and medical therapy in this patient group has led to a substantial improvement of survival. As you can see by the chart, at year 2000, there were as many children as adults, followed by a substantial increase in the amount of adults living with congenital heart. And by the year 2010, the adults by far outnumbered the, the pediatric population. So as of today, we reckon that the adult population is twice as large as the pediatric population. And it's expected to increase steadily until 2050, where we expect it to reach a plateau. And as we all know, the pediatric services in this population are quite well de developed, but the adult population is not that well served. That has been acknowledged by our international medical community. So in particular, the British and the Americans, they have developed various task force. And the most recent guideline from the American Heart Association and uh, American College of Cardiologists, they have a 100 uh, side long guideline covering all aspects of congenital heart disease. For us, they have pro provided a very comprehensive, very simple classification system. It's called the AP classification system for ACHD. The A is for anatomy. Category one, that's the simple ones. Category two, that's the moderate complexity patients. And category three is the complex patients. Well, that's good. And the lists are, uh, the lists are as long as I don't know what. Interestingly, they also have the P there, the physiological state. So the AP classification system <laughs> integrates anatomy and physiology in their risk assessment. Ranging from A, which is a perfectly healthy patient with no uh, physiological impairment, to D, the patients with severe threatening end organ failure. And they also have covered what we need. They have covered non-cardiac surgery. And they state clearly that any patient, simple, moderate, or complex, having signs or symptoms of physiological impairment, they are to be discussed with experts in the field. That means, for practical purposes, that in case you meet such a patient, pick up the phone and call me. And all patients with moderate complexity and severe complexity, whether they're completely healthy with a normal physiological state, they should be handled, uh, handled in consultation with experts. Well, all this is abstract, okay? I'll come back to you in the next video and show you how to do it. Thank you.